Today, we're building a Christmas Nutcracker that measures almost 7 feet tall. Now, this tutorial is the most comprehensive and detailed Nutcracker tutorial that you will ever find. And all the links, measurements, and materials I used are shown in the video and linked in the description below. So if you've ever wanted to build a Nutcracker, today is the day. So join me for this awesome Christmas tutorial. To begin making our nutcracker, we need PVC pipe and we're going to start with the legs. The legs are going to be 24 inches tall and we're going to be using PVC pipe that is 4 inches in diameter and they sell these in 10 feet sections. Now this PVC pipe is called a sewer drain pipe which is thinner than the regular PVC pipes. So make sure you buy the sewer drain pipe. Also, I link everything that I use on my channel in the description below. Just hit more and it'll have all the links to everything I use. Also, I don't get any type of commissions from these companies for posting the link. So if you find a different product that can work, then go ahead and use it because I don't get a single penny from any of these affiliate links. I just put the links there to make it easier for you, the viewer, to find what I'm using, to know what store it's from and the price of it. So let's go ahead and cut this PVC pipe. So this is what you should be left with. We've cut four pieces total, two of them are for the legs and two of them are for the arms. This is all from one PVC pipe and now that we've cut the arms and the legs, we can move on to the next step. I wanted to take a quick moment to mention the first book I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat and it's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. It's rated for kids ages two to six years old and it follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. If anyone wants to support me or read it to their little ones, go check it out, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. To make the base of the Nutcracker, we need two by four wood and plywood. Now we need to cut four pieces. Two of these pieces need to be cut to 24 inches and the other two need to be cut to 21 inches. We're gonna screw them together into a square and it's gonna be a box that's 24 inches by 24 inches. The plywood needs to be cut to the same size, 24 inches by 24 inches. You can use half an inch of plywood or three quarter inch plywood. Now we'll probably need three inch screws we're going to screw it all together and then probably use one and a quarter inch screws to attach the plywood to this wood frame. So let's get to screwing. All right, so I'm going to use my drill bit to pre-drill two holes on all the sides so that the wood doesn't split. So we're going to make sure it's nice and plumb like this. For the body, we're going to be using a sono tube. Now this one is 4 feet tall and 12 inches wide and they sell these at your hardware stores such as Lowe's or Home Depot. And this is going to be the main body. We need to coat this in dry lock. Dry lock is a weatherproofer so this will do good outside. That's where I keep my props. So I have some dry lock. It's gray but they also sell it in white. You can use either or. And then we're going to coat it with two coats of dry lock. Once it dries, then we can apply the colors that we want to paint our nutcracker, red, white, green, whatever you want to do it. But let's coat it. Also, dry lock can be toxic. So don't breathe in the fumes in an enclosed area. Don't use dry lock inside the house. If you're going to do it, use a respirator. I'm outside. It's nice and windy. Let's be safe on this channel. So let's paint this entire thing. Once your tube has dried with dry lock, we can paint it with our exterior latex paint. 
Now, you can paint your Nutcracker whatever color you want, but if you want to follow my procedure, I'm going to list the colors I'm using right below on the screen so you know what I'm getting. I always use Volspar paint from Lowe's, but you can go to Home Depot or Sherman Williams and get their paint. So this is important. We need to measure this to paint it in sections. The first 12 inches, you need to measure from the top down 12 inches, that'll be the hat area. Once you mark it, let's go 12 inches lower to do the face area. That'll be the face, we'll paint it a nice white or pink color, whatever color you want to do the face, go ahead. And then the remaining, which would be the remaining 24 inches will be for the torso and chest. Now, this is very important because these measurements define the area. So just remember, 12 inches down, hat. 12 more inches down, face. And the remainder, which should be 24 inches, will be the chest and the torso. And I'm going to divide, divide these sections with painter's tape, the blue painter's tape that you can get at the store. We're just gonna divide it, then we're going to paint it, we're gonna let it dry, bam, and then we're done. And then we can do the details of the face. All right, so now it's time to attach the legs to the base. We're going to cut two two by fours. They're gonna go inside of the legs. Remember, we cut two by four for the side of the base. Now we need two more pieces. Each piece of two by four wood should be cut at 24 inches, which is the same length as the leg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the legs right in the center, and let me turn it this way slightly. And you can choose to put them really close together or a little bit further apart. I'm gonna do about an inch apart. But like I said, you can do whatever size you want. We have our disc and the disc, the wooden disc, goes on the top like this. This wooden disc is going to be attached with screws to the two by fours that are inside this. And we're gonna turn this over and attach two screws to the underside of the two by four so it's one solid piece. So let's start first with the two by four. And as always, everything I use from the PVC to the paint to the tools I use, all of it I link in the description of this video. Just hit the more option. All right, so what we've done is we've placed the two by fours inside of the legs just so we know exactly where we want it. And right now they're separated by about almost an inch of separation in between the legs. So carefully, I'm gonna take this off like this. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And before we move anything, we're gonna get a pencil and we're going to outline this leg so we know exactly where it's gonna go. So grab your pencil, do that, do it to both sides, and then we can drill a hole on the underside and we can put this on its side and then drill two screws from the underside into this wood so it can be held up. Okay, so I did two pre-drilled holes with our little drill tip and I have my helper on the other side holding the wood so you'll need a second person to help you. So once you've lined it up with the box that we did with the outline, you find the holes that you made in the center and then we're gonna drive it right in. They're gonna hold the wood really nicely. And then we're going to get right there in the other hole we made and drive it in. So once we've finished screwing them, this is what you should have a leg that is sturdy, and now we're ready to put the PVC over it, and we can use our wooden disc on the top of it, because that wooden disc that we have here, this wooden disc is where the top half of the Nutcracker will sit on top. All right, so this part is very important. We have the wooden disc right here that's gonna go on top of our legs, but before we do anything, we need to attach two more pieces of two by four. Now, this is important because these two by fours are going to offer support once we put the sono tube on top of all of this. So this disc like this, we have two pieces of wood cut at 16 inches and we're going to put the woods on the edge about a quarter to half an inch away from the edge. So if you measure over here, just make sure it's between a quarter and half an inch from the edge. If you wanna mark it, like I've marked it, and they're right across from each other. This will be the front. These will be where the arms are on the side. And over here is the back. So you need to put it on the side where the, where the arms would normally be. So once we put it like this, we're going to do the same thing we did with the legs and the base. We're gonna put two screws underneath there. I'm gonna use two inch screws. And for the base, of course, I use three inch screws to go into the legs. 
And once we do that, then we can put the sono tube on top of this. And why do we need this? So that we can put a couple screws with washers through the sono tube into the wood to prevent anything from toppling over. And that'll give it the needed support. So now that we've marked it, grab your pencil and then just do two circles on where you're going to put the screws. You want it to be right in the middle and then we get our drill with our drill tip. Just like that. Let's pre-drill a hole. By pre-drilling the holes, we're going to prevent the wood from splitting or cracking. So we have that there. We're going to put this just like this. Make sure it's all lined up nicely. Then we're going to turn it on its side like this. And then with the help of somebody else, I like having someone help me. We're going to hold it like this and then we're going to drill two screws right in here to hold this in place really nicely. And this is what we should have after we screw it in with our two screws. Grab your sono tube and just like this, it goes over it just like that. All right, so this is important. Before we attach the arms to the main body, before we attach the hat, you want to paint the face. So once we finish painting this, you need to paint the face on this. So I let this dry for 24 hours at minimum. It's all good to go. We did two coats of the paint. So I've actually included in this video, in the description of this video, there'll be a Word document that's uploaded to a Google Docs link account. So if you hit more in the video below, you'll see a downloadable link. It'll give you that Word documents that I use. You can print them out. You can cut out the eyes. You can cut out the mustache. So it's easier for you to place the cutout eye over here and then trace it, or you can freehand it. Totally up to you. I'm not really good at freehanding it. So I got somebody, AKA Olsi, to draw the eyes and draw the mustache. So get that, print it out if you need it, and then cut it out. So once you do that, then move on to this step. But since I'm gonna paint the face in a moment right now, let me show you what we're gonna do with the arms. So in order to hold this arm to the body, let me make sure the camera is facing it right over here. There we go. So in order for this arm to be attached to the body, we need a PVC pipe. Um, and this PVC pipe has been cut to 20 inches because we want it to go through this sono tube into the PVC so that it can just hold it up like that. So half an inch diameter PVC pipe cut to 20 inches. Next, we need to make a hole into this and a hole into this. So I've measured, remember, measuring all the way down here should be 24 inches from the top. So I'm going to measure three inches down and make a half inch hole. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, right on the opposite side three inches down, drill a hole. Then from here, I'm going to measure three inches down and with the same drill bit, um, I think it's gonna be a wood spade bit, we're going to drill another half inch hole. That way, this PVC pipe can go through the body and into the arm and it can be held like this. The reason we're also doing it three inches is because we have the PVC caps that go on top over here and those PVC caps need some room to be able to settle down. So let's go do those holes really quickly. All right, so measuring three inches, we're doing a little mark right there. Then we're getting a wood spade drill bit. And yep, it fits. Now let's do the same hole to the body of the sono tube, three inches down. Make sure it's on its side and then do it on the opposite end. Now we've made the hole on both sides and then just like so, we feel with our finger on the other end and bam, we put it through just like that. Then we can get our arm and then just like this. So now let me put the camera a little further back. So now this will be up like that and we are good to go. We're gonna do the same thing to the other arm as well. We're not gonna want the arms to be able to come out easily like that. So we can actually put a screw right in here. Once we have this in here, we can put a screw right on the actual PVC. The screw can go just a little bit in here to prevent this from moving back and forth. And at the end of the season, you can remove the screw and 
voila, this moves. So let's finish this up. Right, now that the face is done, look how it came out. Super nice. Alsi painted this, obviously, because I'm not really this skilled. But I'm including, like I said before, the Word document with these two pieces of the face, print them out, cut them out, and then you can trace them or use them as reference so that you can do this exact same thing. So it came out great. The nose is going to go right over here once we painted this color. And look at this, this black line over here, where is it? It's some electrical tape, that's all. We have some black electrical tape, pulled it out completely and put it around to hide the seam between the red and the skin color. So now that we've done that, let's get our other pieces. We have some golden rope, we have some golden fabric as well, and we have our golden buttons. So we're gonna start putting this on the face. You can do it in whatever fashion you want, whatever you think will look best, but I'm gonna do mine just like this. Got it, I'm going to put some hot glue, I'm gonna stick it up like that, and then I'm gonna put some buttons on there. So let's do this really quickly. This should take us no more than 15 minutes. For the nose, we're gonna use a piece of two by four that we have left over. And all we're doing is we're gonna draw a line. I have my little ruler here. And the cool thing about this is that you can make it any size. The wider you go, the pointier it will be. So I'm just going like this just like so, and we're drawing it out just like this. This is about four inches, nothing crazy. We're gonna get our jigsaw, we're gonna cut it out, then we're gonna paint it the same color we painted the face, and then we're gonna use some hot glue to attach this to its face. So now it's time to put the golden buttons on it. We have these over here. As always, I link all the things I use in the description. So what we've done here is I wanted to be dress right dress. I wanted to be nice and level. So I got a bit of cardboard. I marked down one inches. So there's several inches here. I marked them down with a pen. And I went like this. And then I used a pencil and then made marks at every two inches. Made sure I did it on this side as well. And once I did that, we have the pencil marks there and we're gonna put this like that. But because this one has a little thing in the back right there, we're gonna drill a hole in it. I have a little drill tip. We're just gonna drill a little hole. Then we're gonna put some hot glue and we're gonna push it into that hole so it's nice and flush. And then we're gonna put, you can put eight or 10 buttons on there and I think it'll be a nice detail. So I realized too late that I wasn't recording when I was painting the arms and the leg, but it's super simple. We painted the whole of the arms, we painted it red. And then when it comes to the legs, the top portion of the leg will be white. And then the bottom portion will be part of the boot. So it'll be painted black. So we just divided this in half. Remember this is 24 inches. So 12 inches of it is white and then 12 inches of this is black and this is gonna go on the base and then we just used red for this. The red color, I'm going to list all the colors I used so you know exactly which red I used. But yeah, we got that painted and let's go on to the next steps. I have these wood onlays over here that I've spray painted gold and they're gonna go on the shoulder right over here just like this. So I think that'll be a nice little detail. We're also gonna put one, maybe two of these on the hat area on the top. Let me point the camera up there. Uh, right here. So yeah, I might put one right here. I might do two, but I think it'll be really nice. We're just gonna use hot glue. I've spray painted it gold. So let's finish up these details. All right, so let's put our legs over the two by four. And then we have the piece we created. We're ready to go. It's gonna go like this. As a reminder, this needs to go where the arms rest. So if this is the front over here, if this is the front, we can't have this like that. Got it? We need to go where the arms are gonna go, just like this. Now we're just gonna grab a couple of screws and attach this to the two by four on the inside. And then we are done with that portion of the build. Four screws, two on each side. And now we have a very sturdy piece. Let's put the top part of the body on top. So it's important to remember that we cannot have the arm 
all the way touching the body. Remember, this is the PVC pipe we put through and we painted it red so it's not as noticeable. And if we do it like this all the way to the body, we won't have enough space for our end cap. This is the PVC end cap that we got and it goes over it just like that. But it needs that space to be able to go down. So don't attach the screw on the inside of the PVC pipe just yet until you're sure that it'll fit. Then we can take it off and I'm just gonna put a single screw right in the middle. Actually, let me bring it up close right over here. So I'm just gonna get a screw and I'm gonna put it right over here. I have my drill fits right in here. We'll put one screw right in there so that this pipe cannot move out of here. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. That way the pipe stays set in there and the only way to take off the arms is to remove the screw. Screw. And just like that, we put it in a little bit. So now when we put it in on the other side, the pipe won't be able to come out. All right, we're going to attach the hands now to the arm. Remember, these are four inch shatterproof Christmas balls. You can paint them any color you want, but I got these in white. And we have our nylon string right over here. So what we're gonna do is simply put the nylon string through this. Let me show you right up here. We're putting it through. We're putting it all the way to the bottom. And it came out right there in the bottom. So now we're going to attach this right here to the bottom. And let me show you what we do next. Once we have attached our Christmas ball down here, we're just gonna pull the string up like this, and then you can put it at the level that you want it. You can let it hang down more, or you can just let it show a little bit, but whatever you choose, then we're gonna go right here on the inside, and remember the screw that we put in? Well, we're gonna make a little knot right here, and once we make this knot, we can actually hang it on the little screw. So let me do this real quick like so, and then we're gonna put it right in there, just like that. It hangs from the screw, and you're good to go. We're gonna put some fringe on the end caps for the shoulders, and we're simply gonna grab it like this. We're gonna put some hot glue right over here, and we're gonna do it in sections, like this, being very careful not to burn ourselves, and we're gonna do it all the way around. So this next part is extremely important because this will attach the top part of the body to the base. So we're just gonna move the arm out of the way and we have these one inch washers. And what we're gonna do is get some screws and we're going to put it right through the washer and into the wood piece we have on the inside. Remember, we put two pieces of wood on the inside. This is gonna go like this, like this, and probably a third one right over here. The arm is going to cover it, but we can also paint these red so it's less noticeable. But by doing that, we're attaching the entire top half to the bottom half with the wood on the inside. My nutcrackers always stay outside, so for those of you worried that it's gonna soften this when it rains or it's gonna rip out, no, it's not. I've always done this. I've done these nutcrackers for years, and I always do this method to ensure that it doesn't topple over and it stays steadfast. So we have this amazing golden fabric. I'm linking everything below. And all I did is I cut a piece that wraps around it. And I'm gonna use some hot glue on this side. This is the back of the nutcracker. So you won't be able to see the seam once the glue is attached, but it'll be just like this. And it'll be like a golden cuff. For the separation between the body and the face, we're gonna use some of the same ribbon we used for the cuffs. And we're just gonna wrap it like this very nicely. We're gonna go all the way to the back and we're gonna put the same way we did the ribbon, we're gonna put hot glue in the back to hold it together. And I think I'm gonna put some here. The issue is that if I put some here, you're gonna be able to see it through this ribbon. So I think I'm only gonna put some in the back. One of the last things we're gonna do with our Nutcracker is put embellishments and details. And I've purchased these rhinestone ribbons in gold and black. You can get them in any color. They're self-adhesive, but I always like to use a little bit of hot glue and then stick it on top. I'm gonna to put black rhinestones up here, a gold band over here, some on the cuffs, 
maybe some on the boots below. You can do whatever you want, but these add so much character to it. So be creative, go crazy. I link everything I use in the bio below, but these are the options I'm gonna use. I actually think I have one more gold, a different style, and we're just gonna put it in various different places to give it a really nice look. For the hair, we could leave him without any hair, which I think it actually looks really nice like that, or we could do black, white, brown hair. I have here white fur fabric, which I use often on this channel to cover props such as giant spiders. You should check those out on my channel. I do amazing Halloween decorations. But anyways, I've cut this to 21 inches by 15 inches, and we're simply gonna put it like that right below that line. We're gonna put our ribbon first, put the ribbon first up here if you're gonna put the, the rhinestone ribbon. Then we're gonna put this like this. We're gonna move the arms a little bit and the way I'm going to attach this is with expanding foam. I'm going to use an expanding foam that doesn't rise that much. It's window and door, it's the blue bottle. Or if you have great stuff, expanding foam, you can use that one as well. But we're gonna put expanding foam here. Then we're gonna put this like this. The expanding foam acts as an adhesive and then we're going to put some tape over here to hold it for just about an hour and then once it dries you're good to go this will get wet it'll get matted down when it rains but as soon as the sun comes up it'll dry and it'll fluff up like this all the time i always use fur fabric outside it never gets moldy it never gets mildewy it'll dry as soon as the snow or the rain dries off with the sun and it'll be fluffy just like this For the feet, we're just using a Red Solo cup that we've cut like this. We'll cut this part off, we'll spray paint it black, and then with some hot glue, we will simply attach it like that. Lastly, for this exposed area of the wood round that we used, we could put gold ribbon around here, but I'm going to try to just paint it with some gold paint. This is the same gold paint that I use for accent details on the wood onlays. So I'm just gonna paint that in there, but you could just put a ribbon. One of the last things we're gonna place on top is our pizza pan that we spray painted gold. Now you don't have to spray paint the inside, just the edges, and no one's gonna be able to see the top because how tall it is, but this goes on top to prevent water from getting on the inside of the tube. You don't have to do it, but I've always done it like this. So it creates a little lip for the water can just fall over and not inside the tube. We're gonna use a little bit of hot glue on the inside just to hold it in place. It's not gonna go anywhere and that's it, we're done. <laughs> 